in Den Haag, terug in theater aan de Spij voor de Border Sessions. Een serie interviews, vandaag weer nieuwe gasten. Uh, someone at my table, please introduce yourself. Good morning, I'm Cecilia Braid and I'm the coordinator of the IFRC Shelter Research Unit, IFRC International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, so Red Cross Shelter Research Unit. <laughs> very long name, very, very long title, <laughs> okay, so you must be important. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you here? <laughs> um, I, I was here to give a little presentation on our work. Uh, we work to improve humanitarian shelter solutions. Um, and, and what does it have to do with technology? Because that's the subject of this conference, technology and society. What does it have to do with technology? Um, Basically, it's uh, well, given the global scale of, of this of this topic. Uh, I was saying uh, between 50 and 70 million people per year are displaced because of natural disaster or conflict. It means that they end up without having a house, without having a shelter. So those people need to be sheltered. We have the same problem just at the moment in Europe. We can all witness it. And it means they have to be provided with either tents or other technical solutions to house them for a certain am amount of time. So in, in, in that sense, we work on improving this kind of technical solutions. We work on tents that are, for example, winterized tents. Uh, we also work on local building technologies. If we work in, in countries like Africa, Asia, etc., then we look at the more the local uh, the materials and techniques. So it's in that sense, it is technical, I would say. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't have to do uh, with with any technical uh, things like um, apps or computers or things like that or um, do they come in, in yes and no I mean it, for the research and development it's of course not the uh, information technology that we use but but we do have a database also of, of shelter solutions that we established where we record shelter solutions that have been implemented all over the world in the same systematic uh, and methodological uh, format. And that can, um, other colleagues can uh, uh, um, look into the database online. And if they're in a context that they haven't been before, they can see what kind of shelters have been implemented in that same context, and they can use that as inspiration and resource for future, for future projects. Yes. So in that sense, it's a little bit also of information technology, but ours is more building technology, yeah, let's say. Yeah. So how many uh, different sort of shelters uh, are there as many as there are people I guess I yeah. mean there's of course there's some because we see the tents and we see the big white tents and we see uh, exactly I mean shelter is not only tents it starts from a plastic sheeting that is distributed after disaster and people use some uh, building materials that they find and they build their own little structure with that and then as a, of, as a roof as a roof yeah. for example if their roof has been blown off their house and they just use this plastic sheeting to temporarily repair then of course there's a whole number of tents using usually now in the in the Red Cross and also UNHCR we're using one standard tent but we're now developing other standard solutions because for different contexts different climates mainly you need different mm -hmm. solutions now very much looking into winter solutions for European context but also around Syria crisis um, but if you look at sheltering after disaster it also means reconstruction it means to reconstruct the houses that have been destroyed according to local uh, techniques, according to local materials that are available, but with a better solution than it was before, so that in the next disaster it will hopefully withstand and give the, the people a more safe shelter. Yeah, yeah that probably applies to places where there have been earthquakes or, earthquakes, or floodings. hurricanes, flooding, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and is, is, is there... Um, well, of course, there's a lot of t technique developed, so probably there's a lot of uh, well, changes that can be made. Indeed. I mean, that's what we see through the documentation that we do and we analyze and that's where we point out where are the weaknesses and in each context is a different weakness. It's maybe a, maybe a material that is not uh, well enough, uh, it's not strong enough and it has to be improved or maybe a technique that is not really resistant against earthquake, for example, and you need to introduce a new technology, etc. So it really depends on the context, on the type of disaster, on the climate on the culture of the people as well because they want to have something that fits into their cultural context and that is fit to their use also of, of the shelter. So there's, it's a very complex uh, topic with a lot of, of different um, challenges to be resolved. Yeah. Can you give a practical example where you, where you saw uh, or where, 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 you, where a new material was used for example and that made a huge yeah, difference? Yeah. Well, one of our most recent developments it's, it's actually a winter tent that we developed basically for the operations around the Syria crisis because they're the tents that were used in the first phase 
are the standard tents that are normally being used in more moderate and, and warm climates. Now in those regions they face quite harsh winters with snow with minus degrees. How, how cold will it get? Um, at least minus five it can get uh, yeah. in, in the south of Turkey, in northern Iraq, etc. It, yeah. yeah, there will be snow. They already have snow, I think, even now in Lebanon. And uh, so the tent solutions that they were using were absolutely not, uh, not really adequate. So we developed a, a winterized tent. And there we spent a lot of time on, on um, research for, for new materials, insulating materials. We were working with um, a Marmara University, it's a university based in Istanbul. And they came up with a new kind of high-tech material, which is a, a sort of felt, like you, the, the natural felt, but made yeah. from recycled pet, pet bottles. So it's a very cheap material because it's yeah. recycled, but it has very high insulation capacity, it's very light and very cheap at the same time. So we use this material in that new tent and we have improved the, the thermal capacity of 30%. So we can reduce the heating costs and we can improve the thermal comfort for the people that are, are living inside. Yeah. What, what are the, the, the main problems? Because you, you mentioned cheap. I, I guess that's one of the things that, that you always have to yes. take in account. That's one of the main criteria, yeah. of course, it has to be low cost. What is very important is also the weight, because if you look at disasters, usually you look at uh, airlifting things into that uh, context, uh, and then airlifting means the price per weight, so you can easily end up spending five euros per kilogram of, 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 of uh, goods that you want to ship, and that means that sometimes you pay more than the price that actually the tent costs, you pay more than that for the transport. So reducing the weight means reducing the cost, and also for handling the tent, like later when it has to be built, it has to be easily carried by two or maximum four people. Uh, so it cannot be more than 100 kilo, that's the, the maximum. And um, yeah, so that's also always a challenge. Yeah, is it a subject that um, well, universities or, or um, factories are interested in? And do they understand the problems you're facing? Because I can imagine that, uh, well, a factory doesn't really mind whether it's light or, or cheap or it, it just produces something that's that's being bought but not especially no, there, there is there's actually quite big interest in, yeah? and we do collaborate quite a lot with suppliers and also with universities to help us um, really de get the product right I mean we work a lot with universities to do structural calculations to do some sort of testing and, and etc and we work with suppliers as well who do have an interest because it's a big market at the same time mm -hmm. Um, and they help us to get the things that we develop into production and then, of course, to, to have a, a business for them, which is fine. I mean, as long as they produce yeah. according to the specifications that we need, yeah. um, it's, it's a win-win. Yeah. Um, well, because in Europe we see all the refugees coming at the moment, we, we over here, we feel it's, well, a, a very uh, big problem, growing problem. I, is, is that the case or is, is, is it just because we see it uh, now? Well, what we see here now is basically what is going on all over the world. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, <laughs> and if you look, for example, at Lemon, and it's already a fourth of the population that are refugees. Yeah. Whereas here, I don't know, it's a few percent. So I think here in Europe, the problem is not as big as many people see it. Um, but it's a global, it's a global topic, of course. There's yeah. a lot of people displaced. There's a lot of people on the move. And it's just something we have to deal with. Yeah. Are you optimistic about the future or? Well, let's say like this, I mean, disasters are not very likely to decrease. It, statistics really show clearly that there's more disasters and more stronger disasters. A Especially because of the, the, because the climate of, problems? Probably because yeah. of the climate change. And uh, conflicts are also apparently affecting more and more people at the moment, at least. Um, so for that, uh, well, I, I'm not in the position to give a, a prognosis. But I do see that we make a lot of improvements in, in developing our sector, so in improving humanitarian shelter solutions. I think we've made some big steps, and it's our little part that we can contribute yeah. to make the things, uh, make the situation a bit better. Yeah, so in that way, it is a better time than, say, 50 years ago. Ah, oh, yeah, definitely. For, I mean, for humanitarian sheltering, it's, it's a good time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of work. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Goed, tot zover. Blijf kijken straks een volgende gast.